to understand Kenya's journey of hope through the eyes of the story. A nation is like a person. It passes through sufferings, ups and downs, and frustrations of various colors and works through a pilgrimage of hope. Kenya, too, has had its journey of hope amidst the ups and downs and frustrations. Bishop Desmond Tutu reminds Kenya today through the Zen South Africa, saying hope is being able to see that there is light despite the darkness. When your forefathers fought the colonial ramshackle and started rebuilding the nation, what did they have except the hope to be free? Despite the colonial evil surrounding them, Kenyan founding fathers hope was the spirit of freedom in the patriotic song Harambe. I remembered my seventh grade Pan-African history teacher who taught us to sing Harambe in our classroom. It's still fresh in my mind though I can't say it now, all the lyrics. Harambe, Harambe, to Imbe Pamoja, to Jengi Serikali, Watu wa Kenya hatuna ubagazi, Kila rangi tunependa, Wengi walisema, Kenya itakuwa matata, Watu walde wastarabu. I would love this uh, beautiful choir which we saw earlier to sing this. Harambe, harambe, to embe pamoja. Harambe, harambe, to embe pamoja. Harambe, harambe, to embe pamoja. To jengi serikad. That's all I can go. <laughs> Kenyan forefathers sang Harambe for freedom and Harambe for unity and nation building. It's time that this generation of Kenyans should sing Harambe again to break poverty and shine like the dawn. The Zen Kenya shouted Harambe to defy colonial servitude, while the now Kenya will shout out loud to become the beacon of peace, equality, and prosperity through integrity. <laughs> Kenya will become the pride of Africa because, said the poet, Hope is a thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune of a dream. However, my fellow Kenyans, I have the caveat that Kenya's hope can flourish and bear fruit only by undergoing the practice of metanoia. And that must, I repeat, must, start with the leaders. Kenyan leaders, critically starting from the three branches of government all the way to the business, religion, education, and academia, etc., must stop externalizing and look into the deepest corner of their hearts first. The leaders must start relearning that they are the primary reason for Kenya's problems shift their minds and became models for renewing and restoring Kenya's shattered hope. 
the late famous Ethiopian singer had a song that says, when you point out with your index finger to others, the other three fingers, these three fingers, point to yourself. Years ago, I asked my Norwegian friend who served as Norway's foreign minister and finance minister to tell me the magic of Norway's phenomenal position in the world. As you know, Norway, by all indexes of development, are at the top of the world, be it economic, political, freedom, happiness. They are the most happy people in the world. So I was inspired by that and asked this friend of mine, Norwegian friend of mine, how did they do that? I expected him to give me a one or two hour lecture to help me understand the intricacies of nation building so that I might copy it for Ethiopia. He said to me, and I quote, it really boils down to one foundational thing, and that is trust. If leaders can build trust among, other, among their followers, if, this, if the government can be trusted by the people, the dreams of the nation can come true one step at a time. Hope built upon the foundation of trust becomes the pillar of social fabric that creates miracles. The first and foremost action of the leaders of Kenya is to shift their perspective from ecosystem to ecosystem perspective. Never consider it easy to think that way, let alone to practice it. However, it's not impossible. It only needs to resolve to do the impossible possible with the help of the following story. And I was at the national uh, conversation yesterday in that meeting, and I observed one very important thing there about Kenyan leaders. And that is that all Kenyan leaders have acknowledged and knew and are aware about Kenya's problems. And this is the most important thing because it's half of solving the problem. And I'll, I'll, I'll proceed to the story, this story. More than 2,000 years ago, there was this teacher who promised all the lofty and beautiful things for a group of people who came to him to listen to his teachings. Excited by what the teacher told them, they started wishing to be his students or followers. Knowing what they think, he said to them, I quote, if anyone wishes to follow me, he must deny himself and set aside selfish interests and be willing to endure whatever may come to believe in me, confirming to my example in living, and if need be, suffering or perhaps dying. For whoever wishes to save and love his life in this world will eventually lose it through death. But whoever loses and hates his life in this world will find it for all eternity. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world of wealth, fame, and success, but forfeit his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? This teacher, as you know, was Jesus of Nazareth, and the students, his disciples. He demonstrated to them how to deny himself for, ser for, st for serving others, and they did what he showed them. This is from the book of Matthew, the message version of translation. Is it a huge demand? Resounding, yes, but worth it. When and if the leaders start practicing this, they can no doubt build trust among the people of Kenya. Then and only then can they lead the people with an authoritative moral ground. 
Hope is the mother as well as the offspring of purpose. The power of hope inspires leaders to lead with purpose and the people to live up to it. And clear purpose in return springs ever reinforcing renewal of hope. Without a purpose, though, hope can diminish and eventually will die out. In that sense, we may say that purpose is a flame of the hope. A few months after I started living in the United States, I asked myself this question. If America, only with 200 years of history, becomes so prosperous and at the top of the world, why Ethiopia, with thousands of years of history, remained among the poorest? It's a huge question. Maybe even difficult to obtain a consolidated and closer to the truth answer. However, it's a worthy question and a timely inquiry for such an era like we have now, especially for the current generation of Kenyans and Africans. The question led me to a nearby library and studied the founding America and found out three fundamental things. Number one is trust in God. That's why Americans say, in God we trust, even though now they are forgetting it. Number two, a clear and transcendent purpose, vision of their context, an idea for themselves. Number three, selfless band of leaders. These are the three foundational things that I found out from my study about the founding America, not the now America. And finally, these things created the we, the people of hope. I think Africa lacks all, or at least a few, of these basics. Africa needs African idea. A purpose that learns from other countries' experiences, but basically tuned to its nature and serves our context. We don't need copying. We need adapting. Because I have a painful experience of copying communism, socialism, to Ethiopia and fail. Most importantly, Kenyans need selfless leaders with purpose-driven leadership. Selfless leaders create selfless people. Leadership is influence, right? A shift from ecosystem to ecosystem which demands self-dying. 